The term a good death is both a phrase and a concept. It has both changed and remained the same as it always was, which all sounds very wishy-washy. So what the hell is it? Let's talk a good death. Every culture throughout history has had an idea of what a good death is. We're human and the idea of dying a slow, painful way sounds like a bad time. So dying peacefully seems preferable. And while death has always been around, it really was the Victorians who took the concept and really made it their own because of course they did. Oh, Victorians. Death and mourning really was an art form during this period. In this very elaborate but conservative Christian time, as Catherine Arnold puts it, the good death refers to death as the right end of a Christian life, with the promise of an eternal one to follow. A good death means dying peacefully in your own bed, surrounded by family and friends, with clergymen on hand to administer the last rites, and your children brought in to kiss you goodbye. These elaborate funeral customs ease the transition from deathbed to the final resting place of the grave from natural sleep to the sleep of death. A good death meant the opportunity for final last words. A bad death was one that involved dying alone, in pain, in violence, suddenly, or in unexpected circumstances. Suicide was considered a particularly bad death because it was a sin and illegal. In fact, suicide was only taken off the illegal list in England in 1961. Want to be even more shocked? By comparison, in Australia, it was only in 1967 that Victoria decriminalised the act of committing or attempting to commit suicide, followed by 1983 in New South Wales and South Australia. It was not decriminalised until 1990 in ACT and 1996 in Northern Territory. A good death today. So what is considered a good death today? Why am I and so many others fighting for the right for everyone to have a good death? Here's a quick cheat sheet. The person can direct their final days. This includes direction of the place of death and what treatments they wish. Family and doctors may have the best of intentions, but it is important to give the dying person control of their own life in their final days. The person has a sense of completion. For some, this is spiritual, such as being forgiven for past sins. For some, it is the completion of goals. For others, it is resolving interpersonal conflicts. They are free from pain. Hospice teams, both inpatient and outpatient, are trained to manage physical, emotion and spiritual pain. They maintain their dignity. Their feelings, opinions, privacy should be respected. They are supported by loved ones. Most people want to have the support of their loved ones around them, even if they are unconscious in their final days. How do we make this happen? Obviously, this is not always going to be possible, simply due to the way many people die. There's probably no good death in a murder or drowning. But the point is, we try to obtain it for the people when we can. And the best way to do this is by listening to the person and advocating for them when needed. And with this in mind, remember those advanced care directives that I'm always harping on about? This is what they're for. And if you're new, an advanced care directive is a legal document that you complete long before you're injured or ill that outlines what you do and do not want for future treatment. It is often called a living will. We did a whole video on the who, what, why, etc. And I'll link that below. Secondly, this is also where voluntary assisted dying laws come into play. Again, this gives a dying person dignity and control over their own death. We did a whole video on that too, explaining how it works and why it's needed, which I'll also link below. So check those out. It is good information to have for yourself and for those closest to you. While all this seems obvious, many are not having a good death which is something that is often corrupted by discrimination and bureaucracy and people's inability to deal with the reality of death. So with this in mind, go talk death.